My name is Jeff Badger, The Grinding Doc. I'm here with Bill Freeze of Rush Machinery. And I'm here this week to work on a project uh, regarding truing. Their goal is to uh, you know, find, you'll find a good parameter to start with so it saves a lot of time of trial and error. And also you know, really improve the cycle time so that the process is a lot more efficient. And there's really just not a lot of good information out there uh, on truing, unfortunately. So for my customers, uh, they come to me in my courses or on my company visits, and they say, hey, can you help us with truing? And, you know, should we go unidirectional, anti, what depths of cut, what traverse speeds, what RPM ratios, RPM should we use? And unfortunately, my short answer is just, I don't know. That's my expert opinion is, I don't know. And I don't think anyone else does either. So this is one of the areas in grinding that unfortunately is done by feel. It's done as kind of an art form. So I got together with Bill and I said, hey, why don't we, I'll come to Rush, we'll hang out for a week and we will figure out truing. Uh, we will do some tests on one of their machines. We will use the concepts of aggressiveness to figure out how aggressive we are in truing and how quickly we can remove material, what the forces will be, what the risk of chatter is. We're working on uh, a model of this so that in the coming weeks now when I process the results and I discuss with Rush, we can get a handle on truing and not just a bunch of rules of thumb or not just a bunch of anecdotal evidence to say, oh, well, you know, this seems to work, but actually have a good understanding of truing of diamond and CBN wheels uh, from a scientific standpoint and less from an art standpoint. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I've done a lot of testing on my own, but, uh, you know, it's test this, test that, and try this, try that. It's more trial and error as opposed to taking a scientific approach. And a lot of what I've learned, I've learned from a lot of our customers going in where they've been truing for a lot of years, all kinds of applications, all kinds of unusual things. And I've seen what works and what doesn't work, but uh, it's really good to get, you know, some finite information to where you can really see where to go. You know, not just try going one way, then another way, and then you get too many variables uh, to be able to do that properly. So by being able to really go through a systematic testing uh, with good data, it makes it a whole lot easier to see where to go. So yeah, so our testing, uh, what we're doing is I've done gobs of testing on machines in industry and also in the laboratory. And typically when we test, uh, when you do a grinding test, which in some respects this is just grinding. Basically we're taking a diamond wheel and grinding silicon carbide with it, or you could look at it vice versa. And the two things we typically measure when we do a grinding test or a trimming test are wheel wear or G ratio. Uh, in this case we call it the D ratio. Or, and we measure grinding power, because if we know the grinding power, we know the forces that are being generated. So those are the two main things that we've been doing. We've also collected the swarf, so we've actually just placed a little collector below the interface between the diamond wheel and the silicon carbide wheel to collect it to see how big are the grits that are coming off. The diamonds, is it fracturing the diamond or is it just busting it out of the bond material? Is there any chemical attrition going on uh, of the diamond? So we can really get down to the nitty gritty and figure out the mechanisms of removal from a nitty gritty level uh, after we look at some of the SWARF and electron microscope. Yeah, I think the, the one most thing is the whole the looking at the aggressiveness of the of the dressing wheel versus the diamond wheel. You know, that's something that didn't really, you know, something you're aware of but didn't really focus on. There's a lot of applications where you have some issues with vibration, things like that, and you know where where to stay. You know what print, you know what areas to stay in, and what areas not to go beyond, and that's. Um, Sometimes would be you're actually sometimes a little too gentle on the wheel uh, makes the cycle time much longer and the results are not nearly as good. And I didn't realize how what a big difference it makes. I mean, yeah. you can see when the aggressiveness, if you kind of focused on that, you can see huge changes. Uh, not incremental, not in ten percent better. You're talking hundred percent better, two hundred percent better results. Yeah. So our eventual goal um, is to be able to quantify this with some type of math to say, okay, what's your surface speed of uh, diamond divided by first surface speed of silicon carbide, uh, or put it into a more complicated equation for the aggressiveness. Because like Bill said, we can get, I think it's been fourfold 
increase in how quickly you remove material just by changing the speed ratios and the relative aggressiveness. Now the trade-off of that can be bigger normal forces which means the thing can start chattering. Uh, so the goal is to understand how can we get the highest material removal rate uh, with low forces so we don't induce that chatter. And we're going to have to use some of the tools that we have in terms of the mathematical relations of aggressiveness, speed ratios, things like that. So the end goal is that Bill can give to his customers to say, hey, we think that, uh, you know, don't just kind of play with it, but here's a good set of starting parameters that should give you very quick results to true this guy up uh, rather quickly, uh, given the constraints of chatter and motor power and things like that. So it doesn't take two hours to true a wheel. You can do it in five minutes or whatever the, however, how much you have to take off of there.